All right, so today we're gonna do our second weld, the butt joint. The butt joint, you're gonna take two pieces of metal and you're going to place them side by side and you're gonna weld them together. When we set this butt joint up, we're gonna put a slight gap between these two plates. They will not touch together. Fit up, or the preparation which we do before we weld is of the utmost importance. If we offset these too much or have a wide gap on one side versus the other, it's not gonna go very well. You need to make sure that you have a consistent gap and both plates are level or flush to each other. The shear puts a little bit of a bend in the plate when we cut it. You wanna try and match those bends up. If I try and put this bend to that bend, there's actually a little high spot in the center. But if I flip it around, they'll match up more. I've got several pieces of metal here. Once you do one butt joint, instead of grabbing two new pieces, you can grab a third piece and weld it onto there. And after that one, then you can grab a fourth piece and weld it onto there. You don't need to get two new pieces every time you do a butt joint. We're gonna use 6010 for this weld. All right, 6010 is a very aggressive rod. It burns really quick, really hot, really fast. Uh, if we're not too careful, we can burn a giant hole through this plate and that would be problematic. When we set this butt joint up, it may sound silly, but because we're using 3 16 plate, I want to actually put a gap that is 3 30 seconds wide. So I grab a piece of an old electrode, which I found in a bucket, and I'm going to just make sure that that bare end of the electrode fits all the way down. I don't want it to wiggle but I want it to slide in just nice. You can also squeeze one side of the plate. I usually do this slightly offset the table. Uh, you can even bend these electrodes so they stay put for you. They don't move around. So I'm gonna put this one electrode right here and I'm gonna make sure that gap is nice and tight. The flux will kind of keep it from going one side to the other. And then we gotta get our amperage ready for tacking. Tacking on this, I'm gonna start us about 85 amps and then also make sure that our dig, the adjust button, is up to 70. Hit the main amp button and go back. Make sure your helmet's on. Get your big stick welding gloves on. Do not use your skinny gloves. I'm gonna do my best I can to make sure these plates are also flush to each other. I don't want one end higher or lower than the other, and that's why having a nice ground down table, which you should do at the end of every class period, is really helpful. If the person before you doesn't grind their table, this process is really difficult. And we just put a slight tack there. Now I can raise this plate up off the table. I can wiggle my electrode out of there. Again, it should just barely slide through, okay? And then I'm going to take and I'm going to adjust the other side of the plate. I want to pull it apart just ever so slightly. Again, that tack is just holding together briefly. I'm going to check this end. I want to make sure this electrode will fit and slide in there. But that's the gap we want. I will leave this electrode just kind of hanging out right now. Uh, I also make sure the plates are still flush. If I needed to adjust I can pinch those one way or another, get those nice and level to each other. Again, make sure the plates are nice and level, electrode fitting in the gap. All right, now we got our plates tacked together and they're pretty level to each other. Um, I'm going to set this down on the table. Now, we are going to try and shove this electrode through that gap. And when so doing, we are going to push the weld puddle and the arc all the way to the bottom of that joint. If the metal is sitting directly on the table, there's a possibility we could weld this coupon to the table. If you weld your metal to the table, you will spend the rest of the period trying to grind it off. So in order to prevent that from happening, we'll get a couple pieces of scrap metal. And we just prop up. This will help us from welding it to the table but we will put a lot of spatter on the table and this is where grinding the table every day will come into play as well. The motion that we're going to be doing today is a little bit interesting. I'm never really going to want to take my welding rod off the plate. 6010 has a very aggressive arc and so I can actually touch the metal and keep it there for quite some time and it won't stick typically. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bury the electrode on the surface. And as I get a molten puddle, I'm going to push that molten puddle down and back of the joint. And I'm going to then whip a little bit forward and then push the next puddle down and then down and then down and then down. It's kind of like a sewing motion where I kind of whip out across the surface and then scoop back and push into the joint. And it's really quick. It's really fast. Um, this is a, a kind of a hand-eye coordination that we're going to build. We're going to repeat this all the way down. We're going to go so quick that we may only use somewhere between a half or two-thirds of an electrode for a whole six-inch weld. All right, so it's different than the 7018 where we used a full electrode for a six-inch weld. We'll use half to maybe two-thirds of an electrode for a whole weld if it's done properly. All right, now the angle is pretty important too. We want to maintain a straight in angle. We don't want to angle left or right. We want to have a little bit of a drag angle and we're going to go in line with the joint. This will not work if we're lazy pointing it down this way. All right, we need to push that puddle down. So you need to get that elbow up into the air and then we're doing this nice quick motion, all right? Once we're done, we're going to go grab our chipping hammer and a brush. 6010 slag is very thin. It doesn't look anything like 7018 slag. And so it, we're going to just kind of rake and, and brush. All right, so if we do this weld right, it will look somewhat like we put a little weld on the backside and the front side will be rather sunk in. All right, so there's your butt joint for 6010. It's a challenge, but it will improve your welding skills quite a bit. The hand-eye coordination that you're going to develop right now is going to be key as we keep moving on in all of our welding processes. So keep, keep at it. This is a tough one, but I know you can do it. Okay, good luck. Before you weld with 6010, you might want to try just running a couple beads. The motion that we're going to do is a back and forth. It's called a whip and pause. You whip it and you bring it back and pause a little bit. Whip and pause, whip and pause, whip and pause. And that's how we're going to do our butt joint. So I'm going to run a bead here real quick and kind of show you that it burns, again, very more, uh, it burns more aggressively and it burns hotter. tell that we go fast on 6010 too because that's still not a full electrode that's about a half maybe a little bit more than a half and I got almost all the way across the plate we'll use our chipping hammer and just rake it either down the sides or across the face we don't chip it the slags pretty thin and because of my motions of back and forth I have a nice little stack of welds almost like a really chunky looking TIG weld, but I'm freezing those puddles every time I whip and pause back. Every time I whip forward, I'm trying to maybe even gouge the plate a little bit, push against it and dig in, 
and then I go back and I let that gouge fill up and gouge and fill and gouge and fill and it's just that whip and pause motion. And you want to try and because of my whip and pause motion I get those nice tight ripples. Uh, the further you whip out and the further you whip forward uh, matters and then also how tight they are. We want a nice tight consistent spacing so you want to try and pop out of the puddle about a quarter of an inch and then come back about an eighth and then a quarter and then an eighth and a quarter and an eighth and just keep it nice and tight and quick. Also keep that electrode touching the metal. Uh, 6010 will burn up pretty quick so you gotta just keep feeding it in and keep moving. So after I tried a couple of these beads, I'd be ready to attempt the butt joint, just so I know how 6010 runs. 